This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Elliptical excision of the skin is an essential procedure used for the diagnosis and management of skin and subcutaneous lesions. It can be performed with minimal risk in most patients and may avert the need for other, more invasive procedures. Careful technique is necessary to achieve a cosmetically acceptable linear scar and to reduce the risk of complications. An elliptical excision of the skin is typically performed on pigmented skin lesions, such as dysplastic nevi and melanomas, and non-melanoma skin cancers, including basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas, for which the diagnosis has already been established by prior shave or punch biopsy. In lesions with a high clinical suspicion of cancer, an elliptical excision may serve as a single-stage diagnostic and therapeutic intervention. Elliptical excision specimens allow for histopathological examination of the skin, including the epidermis, dermis, and subcutaneous fat. The procedure allows for determination of the depth of the lesion, as well as demonstration of clear margins within the surrounding tissues. Complete excision of large lesions should not be performed if it would preclude primary closure, which means bringing the wound edges together when closing the defect. In such instances, or when a definitive diagnosis is desired before proceeding with complete excision, performing an incisional biopsy, either a punch biopsy or an incisional elliptical biopsy, should be considered as an alternative approach to obtaining a tissue sample for diagnosis. It is important to obtain and review the patient's medical history before proceeding with elliptical excision. Patients who are taking oral anticoagulants, such as aspirin or warfarin, and patients with thrombocytopenia may safely undergo elliptical excision, but hemostasis may be more difficult to achieve in these patients. An infected or potentially infected site is a relative contraindication to excisional biopsy. The procedure may be performed in such areas for the purposes of pathological analysis and culture if necessary. However, antibiotic coverage at the time of the procedure should be considered. Patients should be asked about allergies to antiseptics, local anesthetics, topical antibiotics, and adhesives. Do not use epinephrine in pregnant women or in patients with severe heart disease. A basic understanding of dermatopathology is required in order to plan the depth of excision. You should be able to determine the tissue level at which the lesion may reside. Most excisional biopsy specimens include the epidermis, the dermis, and the middle and upper layers of subcutaneous fat. Awareness of the anatomy at the biopsy site is important to avoid damage to any vital structures. The temporal branch of the facial nerve is an example of a nerve that lies very superficially in the subcutaneous fat layer and can be damaged during a skin biopsy. Sterile technique should be observed during excisional biopsy. However, it is common to mark the skin and administer a local anesthetic before preparing the sterile tray. To prepare to mark the skin and administer the anesthetic, assemble the following items on a non-sterile tray. Non-sterile gloves, a skin marking pen with ruler, an alcohol swab, a 5 or 10 milliliter syringe, 1 or 2% lidocaine with epinephrine, typically in a concentration of 1 to 100,000, and a 25 gauge to 30 gauge needle. Once the local anesthetic has been administered, gather the following items on a sterile tray. Sterile gloves, sterile towels or a fenestrated drape, antiseptic solution such as chlorhexidine or povidone iodine, gauze, a bowl with sterile water, sutures including a non-absorbable monofilament suture for skin and an absorbable suture for deep tissue if needed, a number 15 scalpel blade and handle, toothed forceps, which are also called tissue forceps, a needle driver, tissue scissors, such as Stephen scissors, a skin hook, suture scissors, such as iris scissors, and electrosurgery equipment, if available. You will also need a specimen bottle and a pathology request form. For most patients undergoing minor skin surgery, no antibiotic prophylaxis is recommended. Current guidelines from the American Academy of Dermatology outline specific instances in which antibiotic prophylaxis is recommended. Before beginning the procedure, confirm that the patient has been informed about the risks and benefits and obtain formal written consent. Position the patient comfortably on the examination table with a skin lesion exposed. Following institutional guidelines, perform a procedural pause to verify the side and site of the biopsy. Wash your hands before touching the patient and put on non-sterile gloves. Consider the margins you will use for your excision. When obtaining biopsy specimens, 1 to 3 mm margins are appropriate as long as primary closure is possible. For the treatment of specific types of skin lesions, surgical margins may vary and should be reviewed before proceeding. Using a marking pen, design the excision with a length to width ratio of 3 to 1 
and with apical angles of less than 30 degrees. This design is called a fusiform ellipse because of the sharp, not blunt, points at each end. The ellipse should be oriented in the direction of the relaxed skin tension lines. These can be reviewed in a text that contains accepted maps of skin tension lines, or can be seen when you pinch the skin circumferentially as the orientation in which the pinch offers the least resistance. Use an alcohol wipe to gently dab the area that will be infiltrated with local anesthetic. Be careful not to smudge or remove the markings. Perform a field block by injecting local anesthetic intradermally and subcutaneously, and include a couple millimeters of extra skin for suture placement. Allow approximately 2-5 to five minutes for the full vasoconstrictor effects of epinephrine to take effect. Meanwhile, assemble the sterile tray. Wash your hands, don sterile gloves, and prepare the site with an antiseptic solution, such as chlorhexidine or povidone iodine. Once again, be careful not to smudge or remove the markings. Drape the site with sterile towels or a fenestrated drape. Begin by applying three-point countertension on the skin surrounding the fusiform ellipse. Position the scalpel at one apex such that the blade is perpendicular to the skin. Use the tip of the blade to breach the tissue at the apex, and use the belly of the blade to make a smooth, continuous pass to the opposite apex. Ensure that the incision is made to the depth of the subcutaneous fat. You may need to make an additional pass if the initial cut was too shallow. Starting again at the initial apex, repeat this step on the other side of the lesion. Using a skin hook or forceps, grasp either apex and lift the fusiform ellipse. Use a scalpel or scissors to separate the fusiform ellipse from the underlying tissues in a uniform plane. The walls and floor of the resulting incision should meet at a 90 degree angle to allow precise approximation of the edges. Place the specimen in the specimen bottle and pass it to your assistant. Hemostasis can be achieved by applying direct pressure to the wound bed for several seconds. If an electrosurgical device is available, it can be used to meticulously cauterize actively bleeding vessels. Prepare for skin closure by suturing the incision. Excisional biopsy typically requires a two-layer closure. When performing a two-layered closure, a series of interrupted deep tissue sutures are placed to eliminate dead space and to bring the superficial layers into close approximation, with slight eversion for a good cosmetic outcome. An absorbable suture is typically used. The size of the deep tissue suture depends on the region being sutured and the tension at the edges of the wound. For example, a 3O or 4O suture is usually acceptable for the deep tissue of the trunk and extremities, and a 5O suture is usually acceptable for the deep tissue of the face. Next, bring the skin edges together precisely. You can accomplish this task with simple interrupted sutures, a running suture, subcuticular sutures, skin adhesive, or butterfly closures. The preferred suture material for the closure of superficial skin is a non-absorbable monofilament suture, such as nylon or polypropylene. Once again, the size of the skin suture depends on the region being sutured. A 4O or 5O suture is usually acceptable for the skin of the trunk and extremities, and a 6O suture is usually acceptable for the skin of the face. Gently wash the site with sterile water or a saline-soaked gauze and pat it dry. In an otherwise healthy patient, no evidence suggests the need for topical antibiotics in a clean surgical site. A thin layer of petroleum jelly may be applied to ensure a moist healing environment. A final bandage may or may not be needed. On exposed skin, the site can be left open to the air after petroleum jelly or ointment has been applied. At other sites, butterfly closures, an adhesive bandage, or a pressure dressing consisting of a non-adherent dressing, dry gauze, and adhesive tape can be used. Complications can occur during the course of excisional biopsy or even after a successful procedure. Complications include bleeding and hematoma, infection, damage to underlying structures, allergic reaction, and aesthetically suboptimal scar formation. Bleeding or the formation of a hematoma after the procedure can often be treated by first applying manual pressure and then applying a pressure dressing. If bleeding persists, hemostasis can often be achieved with chemical agents such as aluminum chloride or by electrocautery. Infection of the wound is most commonly noted several days after the procedure. Instruct the patient to monitor the procedural area for symptoms of infection, including redness, increased pain, swelling, and purulent discharge. Advise the patient to return or seek immediate medical attention should these problems arise. If you have concern about infection, obtain cultures of the wound and initiate appropriate antibiotic treatment. If a bandage or dressing has been applied, it can be removed after 12 to 48 hours after the procedure. At this point, the biopsy site can be cleaned with soap and water twice a day. After the site is dried, petroleum jelly can be reapplied to function as a barrier and to promote a moist healing environment. The timing of suture removal depends on the location of the biopsy and the amount of tension in the closure. In highly vascularized areas with rapid epithelialization, 
early suture removal is advised to prevent epithelialization along the suture tracts, which is known as train tracking of the skin. Sutures on the face are generally removed after 5 to 7 days, sutures on the back and legs after 14 to 21 days, and sutures elsewhere after 7 to 10 days. Excisional biopsy is a commonly used technique for the diagnosis or treatment of skin lesions. With a basic understanding of regional anatomy and careful technique, the procedure can be carried out safely and efficiently. Appropriate aftercare can help to ensure a favorable cosmetic outcome.